All right, howdy everybody. Welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. In this video, what we're gonna do is just start a case study here on this epically trashed copy of Flash Annual number one from 1987. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you we are not gonna send this thing to CGC just because it is always gonna be a low grade. Uh, you can see it has a corner piece creased over. There's evidence of tanning on the inside. There is pretty extensive foxing along the spine here that we can see. Uh, it has a very bad spine roll and it has uh, you know, a corner crunch down here as well. And so this one's really just gonna be more of an uh, example of some techniques we can do, as well as a discussion of some of the things that you know, I see when evaluating a book for the very first time. So this one was featured in the spine roll, why so spine rolled video, but if you didn't see that one, what I'll tell you is I can tell that it's a true spine roll here by kind of flipping on its edge and looking over here, you can see this nice teardrop shape top down. And particularly that teardrop shape is kind of pushing forward. And then we can look at the staples here and see that the staples are on that uh, black line between where there's color and no color. Um, but if we look, the staples are pointed straight up at us. And so that tells us that some of the material that should be on the back cover, so ideally the staples would be exactly on the side, and then all this white should be on the back cover. Now, as we discussed in that video, sometimes you can have either miswraps or manufacturing issues, and so you don't want to automatically assume, because those staples are on the front, especially in Silver Age issues, um, that it is a spine roll. But in this case, uh, being from the late 80s, it almost certainly is a spine roll. And we can confirm that again by looking top down and seeing that teardrop shape. And if we flip it on over here, you know, we can see that there is a really wide uh, swath of inner wraps here that are visible on the um, back cover when you lay it flat. And so this thing is for sure a true spine roll. And we're just going to go ahead and fix that up. So my approach for this one is going to be to do a dry cleaning. And we're going to see if we can unfold this damaged corner as well as, you know, maybe set the corner down here. So I always, always, always start with a dry cleaning. Um, and we're gonna do that on the front and the back. Then what we're gonna do is see if we can adjust the spine with a spine roll correction. And then what we are going to do next is uh, give this a, a little bit of a, a blue LED light treatment just to see if we can make some of that really intense yellowing and tanning go away. Uh, we're not gonna do the interior covers because we want it to match the what, what is probably off-white to, uh, you know, definitely off-white pages. Um, and so we want that to match, but we'll do the exterior just to help it pop a little bit, especially in the reds and yellows there on the cover. And then we'll go ahead and give it a press and hopefully it'll look almost brand new. All right, go ahead and get started here with my regular dry cleaning eraser. And just like normal, what I'm gonna do is just focus on those white areas. And uh, I'm gonna go really light side to side and front to back. And, you know, we're just gonna try to clean off as much grime as we can. And I'm not gonna be too worried about going over co color as long as I go very lightly. So again, if you push down and put a lot of force on there, you will lift color. And if you're new to the hobby of cleaning and pressing, you know, that's why we say practice with practice books, because you will get overzealous. You'll try to get that last little bit of dirt and you'll regret it because you'll transfer all that wonderful ink to your eraser. And so again, we're going side to side there. You can see it's picking up quite a bit of fouling. And again, I just scraped that off, kind of off camera. I use a, a little strip of painter's tape on my desk and I just rub it across that painter's tape. And you can see that's kind of how I unfoul my erasers. Works out quite nice. All right, that's about all we got there. Use the text box here. You know, we can worry about all the space by the flash, but it actually looks pretty good from a dry cleaning perspective. This book's problems are not surface dirt on the front cover. The back cover has a lot more, which is something you'll hear me regularly say. Those back covers are where you can tell if people have cleaned the book or not. Dry cleaning, that is. So uh, we'll just give the spine here a little bit of a gentle gentle rub and I want to be careful not to because there are these tears in here and I don't want to cause them to be any deeper so it's important to be just really light and gentle on the surface okay. moving on to the back 
Uh, now the back spine is going to be a real problem, especially where it's rolled, uh, which is unfortunate. And little bits like this right here above that cookie packet are going to be true staining. That's not going to come out with a dry clean. It's definitely in the paper, not on the paper. Hopefully we'll be able to make this comic look a whole lot better. Again, I recognize it's not a super valuable issue. I'm sure nine-eighths of this book are not even that expensive. But I thought it would be a really good example for combining a lot of little techniques. We are going for eye appeal here, really. Now, uh, you can tell that this book was sitting with its spine rolled for some time because there's actually dirt picked up on the inner pages. And I normally don't clean inner pages, but in this case, I'm just gonna take my eraser gently down them and see how much I can pick up. go on to the cover back to the cover again when I'm doing my dry cleaning I like to keep my fingers splayed and use a little bit of downward pressure not much but I try to keep that eraser motion between my fingers get any oops and daisies and cause a rip or a tear. Now on the corners again I use my uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Sheets. I find that that has really helped me minimize any issues with the eraser especially when you get to that corner you know you don't want to cause a corner tear. So I like the Mr. Clean sheets around the corners especially. Unfortunately, with the rolled spine, you know, I don't want to push too hard down and cause a crease or a bend or anything worse. So I got to be real gentle around around that area. But unfortunately, it's filthy right up here. sheet down the, down the side here. The cover is definitely wiggling more on the staples as you might imagine uh, because the staples are already loose. All right so here is one of the other tricks. I'm going to take a brand new piece of the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser sheet and I'm just going to do the whole cover but I'm putting essentially no pressure down on my fingers here. If you put pressure down with these Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Sheets, you will lift color. But if you just very gently rub that, and I call this kind of the Ouija board method, because you, you know, again, you want very little, if any, downward pressure on that cover, essentially none. And we'll see how, how this looks when I lift it up. You can see right where my fingertips were applying even just the slightest pressure. There's a tear right there, so I don't want to make that worse. But again, this is just getting all that surface dirt from between those letters. And it's just very gentle rubbing. Thank you. 
much less. So we're going to call that done. We've got a lot of it right there, very little of it there. But you don't see any blues or yellows. It's just mostly dirt. So that is all we wrote on that. Give us a little bit of a cleanup here. We're going to go back to the eraser here. I just want to clean off my area in this comic as much as possible. See all the dirt you make when doing this. I definitely want to pick up as much of that as we go as possible. Okay, uh, especially after that Mr. Clean sheet, we can see some of the problem areas. This, I think, is also staining right down here. At least it's not coming off. This is another great example why uh, if you see somebody's work online, you know, don't cast judgment too quick because clearly I am trying to dry clean it right here and it's not dry cleaning off. So it's not like we're just being lazy and missing it, making a choice based on the condition of the comic as it presents itself, not to push that further. I think if I keep scratching there, it's just going to cause problems. Here we got a little bit of work to do. It's looking pretty good though. Uh, and you'll notice I put my thumb right on that tear because I don't want to accidentally hit that tear and make it worse. And so I'm using my thumb to protect it from my other hand just to make sure I don't accidentally, you know, cause a huge rip or a small tear and make it a huge rip. That would be very, very sad. So here we are. spine area here and again this is definitely some crud built up on there so that kind of crud um, you know what I usually do is just take a, a little spatula here and just gently scrape it off you can wet it there's always a risk you're gonna damage the paper underneath generally the paper underneath is already damaged so you can see even though we got that chunks off there's a there's a pretty dark dot there hopefully we can get that with some of the blue LED work All right, so that's going to be dry cleaned. Let's go ahead and get this started then. Next up would be spine repair. But before we move on to that, we have to fix these corners. And we'll be able to use our iron with that a little bit as well. Keep everything as good of a wipe off as I can just to get rid of all those little bits of eraser that cause problems later on. So as much as we can get rid of. Okay, let's get started on the next step. What I'm gonna do here is plug in my iron. So I use the Hanger 9 iron here, recommended in the Captain Mike book. These, as I understand it, are incredibly hard to find and they've been back ordered since 2021. Um, but you don't really need uh, this exact brand of iron. I think what you need is something that has, you know, maybe an inch and a half to two inches of a square working area. And you need to be able to set and control the temperature between about um, 235 Fahrenheit. And I'll use about 180 Fahrenheit. So most of my stain removal and whitening work that I do with so-called spot hops, I usually set it to right about there. So just below the 1.5 dial. And when I'm doing this kind of work, we're going to increase that a little bit to be right around the two on the dial. Uh, and that at least claims to be about 234 degrees. So the other thing I'm going to do is just to avoid any issues with the surface of the desk here is I put down this MDF board. There's nothing special about this. Uh, it is just a pretty inert surface to be working on. And um, just to make sure I don't cause any scratches to my comic book surface, I put down a little bit of SRP paper with the comic on there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a Q-tip here and try to roll over those corners and then hopefully give them a very, very quick, very, very light ironing. And to do that, I'm going to just gently damp, uh, dampen this Q-tip using uh, just distilled water. Nothing too crazy there. And you don't want it to be wet. We don't want to be leaving um, water, you know, on the comic book. So we just want a little bit that's even too wet. We'll dry this off a little bit. squeeze it out. I just want a little bit of moisture to be able to be it painted on. And what I'm going to do is take um, this corner 
with, uh, I, I generally use a, a magazine backer board here, and um, we're just going to put that under there, and I'm just going to gently roll this corner over, and hopefully we won't be able to, we won't crush it, and I'm just going to put a very amount of moisture on that crack. Uh, by the way, these edges, especially when they're creased that bad, and you can already start to see it tear up here, very high probability that this just falls off, but we'll see what we can do with it. I'm just going to give it a three banana, four banana, and, and lift. This, by the way, is the parchment paper. So this is my up and up uh, Target brand parchment paper. You do not want wax paper. Remember, wax paper is made of wax, and it will melt into your comic book. And so there we go. This is our nice wet edge there. Again, I'm just gently dabbing very, very small amounts of moisture on that corner like so. I probably should have done the inner pages first, but I got excited here and did the corner. It's actually more worried about it falling off. Let me just put this underneath the pages that we want to work on there. Yeah, so this goes quite a quite a bit deeper there. All right, so we're going to put magazine backer board underneath the page that has a, quote, good corner. And then we're just going to take my little tool here and fold that over. And for every one of these, we're just going to roll them with some humidity. And again, we're not trying to make it wet. Just trying to transfer a little bit of humidity to the paper fiber. It's starting to dry out a little bit too much. Going for another, another little dab here of water in my pocket. And I'm just going to... Oh, that was too much moisture. Flatten it out a little bit, dry it out a little bit. Give it the, a good old squeeze. So in principle, these corner crunches come out as you press it, but I think it's better to iron them in advance if you can. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is do about two pages at a time here for ironing. And the inner wraps I usually give maybe a six or seven banana, a little bit more than the covers. Uh, there's no gloss to worry about cracking, and there's no ink down there to worry about sticking to the comic or to the to the parchment or anything like that. So I think you can usually give those inner wraps a little bit more heat. All right. You can see they're they're pretty well flattened out. Now, if you use too much moisture, this corner is going to be kind of fan out, uh, and we'll have to fix that in the final press anyway. But it'll still look better, and importantly, now they're, at least they're all straightened out. Okay, moving on to the other corner here. I've got a little dab of moisture there. I'm gonna pick up. So this one makes me nervous. So I honestly think that there's a pretty good chance this is just going to crack off. So I'm gonna go get a little bit more water on my q-tip and again I'm just going to squeeze this off camera to get a good amount of the big drop of water there off so that again I can see that I'm transferring humidity here to my glove but it's not it's not super wet right, it's got a little bit I'm just going to try to try to loosen those fibers up And if you make it wet, it's gonna tear and separate. If you try to do it dry, it might crack and separate. And so having at least some humidity there is pretty important. And that looked about perfect. So thankfully that worked. So let's just put some light pressure down on there. One banana, two banana, three banana, four banana. There we go. So that's about as good as we're gonna be able to do on that at the moment. But importantly, if we take that out, we've now flattened that piece out, and these wraps here look a lot better underneath. So two of our three admissions accomplished there. All right, now we're on to the spine roll. And uh, what I typically do for my spine roll corrections is I like to open these up to the centerfold. Um, the, uh, I'll point out, by the way, that there's a lot of ways to attack a spine roll. Some people like to use their press to actually press it flat. Some people like to... 
um, iron from the outside in. I like to iron from the outside, or sorry, from the inside out instead of from the outside in. The reason for that is I think the newsprint is actually more receptive than the cover material to kind of change its orientation or confirmation. And I think it puts a little bit less stress on the staples for some reason that I've never come up with. It's just a hunch, it's an intuition. I don't have a really great reason or rationale for it. So let me just see if I can find the centerfold here. There we go. And you can see that those staples are pretty far in there as we roll it all the way over. And so what I'm gonna do now is take a, my um, parchment paper, lay it over the top there, and I'm going to take a cotton round now, and I'm gonna get a pretty good amount of humidity on the cotton round. And so to do that, what I do is take the jug and just dump it on the cotton round, and then I, again, will you know squeeze it a little bit over a garbage can or a towel that I have hanging out on the side. And we're going to use a little bit more humidity here because we're on those inner wraps. So this is this is a little too wet, but you can see it's not spraying moisture all over the place. It, it is wet. You know, you can see it on my gloves, but it's not it's not dripping. We got a little bit of splatter over here. So and we're just going to try to get that SRP paper wet. And I'm not going to directly apply, sorry, parchment paper, not SRP. But I'm not directly putting the water on the comic book. I'm letting it soak into the parchment paper because what I want is for the steam here to transfer, not necessarily to make the comic book super wet. Nope, got a little too much there. Mop that up. Definitely don't want to see any pooling or puddling or anything like that. Definitely just spread it out. Okay, and then what I typically do is I'm going to start in the middle of the comic, away from both staples, because I want to minimize that staple stress. And I'm just going to put some downward pressure right in the middle, and then I'm going to go below the staple, and I'm going to go above the staple next. So I can got, kind of got my finger and my thumb right on where the staples are. We're just going to kind of iron the space between and above and below. And at the setting of, whoop, our setting up bump there. Definitely want to dial that back. Yeah, I check the temperature on these things quite frequently when I'm using it because it's really easy, as you can see, to have that temperature adjust just with a very, very slight motion. Um, and you definitely don't want to be too hot. So we got some of it out there. It's definitely laying flatter. And you might have to do this four or five times. And we're going to put most of that stress and most of the pressure on what you're currently seeing as the left half of the paper, not the right half. Because that's the stuff that was bunched up really bad. And all the spine remove or spine roll correction techniques that I've seen all kind of start with the same basic strategy, which is to flatten the book out first. And each time I do this, now I'm going to just be a little bit more aggressive in terms of the pressure and how flat I want it to get. And what's really nice about starting from the interior out is that newsprint interior is very receptive. So I've got my finger right here on the staple, by the way, so I'm not ironing over where the staple is, I'm just going above it. But that newsprint interior is quite porous and it's very good at transferring the humidity from the inner, inner center fold here through those wraps all the way to the cover. And we will iron it. So my thumb's on the other staple there. And again, I'm just ironing between those staples. I'm being very careful not to put a lot of stress by directly going over the staples. At least as much as we can. We'll have to do it eventually, but we want to get it at least as much fixed as possible beforehand. Was a pretty severe roll too. And I'm just kind of gently migrating that iron up towards the staple in the middle here. It's getting pretty flat. Let's get the staple. So 
all things being considered for how rounded and how flat that was, it's getting there. Um, you can see now that it's pretty flat up top and it's pretty flat down below here, but around the staple, it's still got a little bit more problems on both spots. And so now I think it's about flat enough where we can actually go ahead and start putting a very light little bit of work around the staples. And what I wanna point out to you about the staples is they're metal and they will heat up much faster and they'll be much more conductive to that heat than the paper. And so I wanna be very careful not to overdo it in terms of pressure, but also in terms of duration there. And so I'm just gonna put it over the staple. One banana, two banana, three banana, four banana, five banana. We'll go up here too. And then we'll go between the staples again. This is a double fat issue too, I believe. So it's uh, extra challenging to get through all of those wraps and the memory of the wraps. Definitely not a trivial spine roll, both because of the severity and because of the thickness. Okay, so that looks pretty good from the interior. It's not perfectly flat, but it's getting there. I think now it's about time we're gonna go here to the outside. And uh, you can still see it's quite bulging, especially right along here. But we've made we've made a pretty good dent in it. Uh, you'll notice that this thing is now quite wrinkled and disgusting looking. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit fresher of some parchment paper here um, for the purposes of that. start fresh. Brand new stuff. And just like on the interior, I'm going to watch out for the stables. So I'm just trying to eye up whereabouts they are. It's harder to feel and I definitely don't want to push my finger down through there. Now on the cover, I'm gonna try to be a little bit lighter on both the pressure and the duration than I was on the newsprint. Because again, you can damage the gloss and you can damage the color with too much heat, too much humidity and too much pressure on the exterior. It's also another reason why I like to start in the interior is you get a lot of the kind of brute force work done from the inside out on the more durable and more easy to reset inner pages than on the cover. There we go. Go ahead and go over the staple here. Staple up here. All right. We don't need it to be perfectly flat either, because again, remember, we're going to press this eventually, and this one might need two presses. We'll, we'll see how lucky we are here, but hopefully it'll just need one press. All right, so this thing's pretty flattened out. You can see these big tears that are pretty indicative of what was a spine roll too. So, um, you know, unfortunately, there's no way to get that tearing, you know, to, to go away. That's pretty much there permanently. Now this thing's pretty flat. It's not perfectly flat, but you can see it does have a little bit of a, a ripple and a ridge. I'm gonna do one more on the interior here and see if we can help get some of those stubborn, stubborn inner pages to to surrender. Refill my cotton round. So and I like doing it with the iron over the press, mostly because my presses, you know, are always running a hop stain removal method or just regular presses 
or whatever. And so to me, the press time is kind of at a careful premium and doing this with an iron saves me some of that press time. I also think it gives me more control because I can adjust it on the fly here in between these treatments instead of it being kind of locked silently in a press without any ability to observe how the paper's responding. So I like both that it, you know, is more gentle on the press time, but also that it uh, gives me a little bit more control. All right, so let's see if we can go ahead and get this thing a spine reset now. What I'm gonna do is take uh, the magazine backer board I'm actually going to take two of them on this particular issue here. And what I'm going to do is try to hope that those staples kind of fit in the small space right between there. Uh, when we fold this up, and then we'll be able to kind of fold it on over. And then reset the, and I don't want to do that because that top corner is damaged. So we're going to go from the back here as I pick this up. There we go. And I'm going to hope that originally at manufacture that those staples were or that the staples were smack dab in the middle of the book. And so now that I've got those in there, what I'm gonna do is just gently turn that to the side, and then I'm pulling with my finger and my thumb on that side to kind of get that staple right where I want it to go. There we go, I got that there. And the backer boards are also providing a lot of support because this thing's obviously kind of freewheeling in space. And we, you know, don't want to have a whole bunch more spine damage that's the result of us doing this. And so those two backer boards are quite a bit of extra support, as well as giving me something to curl across and against. So now let's just line that up. Now it looks to me like over here by my fingers that the back cover and the front cover line up pretty well. The inner wraps also line up pretty well. I'll, I'll point out that there is damage on, or binding tear on those inner pages. So if they look like they're not lining up, that's really just the the bottom we can see too. So at least to me it looks like those staples were pretty close to the side when this thing was manufactured and we're going to see if we can get them back to be pretty far down there. Cool. All right now I just want to get that back down. You can see it's still bulging up a little bit in the front, so I'm gonna just try to pull the staples a little bit further under. Again, I'm doing that with just kind of gently putting some pressure on there with my, kind of pulling with my fingers here on the back, just to roll it around that board as much as I can get it. Okay, so we're gonna hope that that lines up pretty well then after I iron it down. And what we're gonna do is basically repeat the exact same thing that we did before now with the spine in a new spot. And just so it doesn't roll, I'm gonna to try to be very careful to always keep one hand of pressure on that comic book. And again, we don't need it to get 100% ironed out because we are gonna press this thing at the end anyway. So, but what we do wanna do is give it a pretty good head start to kind of lock in where that comic should think about it. Now, if the staples are now on the side, you can be a little bit you know, less careful about making sure we're ironing over them or not ironing over them as it were. And so that should be okay. And uh, I'm not putting a lot of downward pressure. I'm mostly just kind of sliding it back and forth. And the parchment paper here is nice, but what you don't want to do is have it crinkle up and then iron those crinkles into your book. So if you start to see stuff like this right here, you want to just start over on kind of a new, new line going down. And you get those crinkles because the paper expands and then contracts back. If you use too much force, you can transfer that pattern into the comic book, which is obviously not something we want to do. All right, let's see how we are doing there. Looks like it's doing pretty good. It might not be perfect. Let's just take the backer boards out here for a sec and see how we're doing. So much better, I would say. Certainly it's lined up a lot better over here, and it's lined up a lot better over here.
Now that we've got that kind of situated, I'm going to drop from two backer boards to one backer board because you can see that the thickness of those backer boards um, is increasing the space between the covers. And so we're just going to go right to the center fold here. And because I'm trying to pull that cover back, I'm going to try to keep the staple underneath uh, so that, you know, I'm getting a good tight roll there from that staple on. All right, now let's do the back. Don't like that positioning. I'll just try that one more time there. Now, if you have a Silver Age book where those staples were not on the sides originally, and you can see that they weren't perfectly on the side because that staple is definitely through the red there, uh, not necessarily on the black line between the borders. The same is true up there. So I don't need to overdo this. I don't want to over pull it. Mostly on the side, but not perfectly so. And now for this, because I'm trying to cause more of a fold, I'm going to keep the iron on the, the bottom and keep it kind of angled so that I'm sliding the, the kind of two-thirds edge down the spine to generate as much of a fold as I can while I do it. And unfortunately, the iPhone is right where I kind of want my head to be, but that's okay. re-wetting my cotton round and kind of giving it a squeeze off camera so that it's not too dripping wet. Dial's creeping back up there a little bit. I don't know why it does that. It only ever seems to go hotter as I move it. I never seem to knock it colder. There we go. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but it clearly presents a lot better already just from that work. So what I'm gonna do from here is, uh, you know, in between videos, I'm gonna give it a very quick, light, dry clean right along the back spine here again, because that was the part that was really hard to get at beforehand. And then what I'm gonna do is take this into the blue light tank, and I think I'm going to do two treatments of blue LED misting, where you mist the peroxide over it. And I use 1.5% hydrogen peroxide for that, so it's, again, the store brand. 3% and I cut it in half 50-50 with water. And then um, I'm gonna do that on both the front cover and the back cover and we'll just see what it looks like. And then we'll, we'll kind of tune back in here. So thank you for your attention so far. This has been a good one.